and good morning. Let's go ahead and do lesson 49 in our heritage studies. My roosters have begun to crow right beside my window, so you probably can hear them as I'm talking with you. All right, today we're going to learn about something really cool called the Rough Riders, Teddy Roosevelt and the Rough Riders. And there's a picture of Theodore Roosevelt, better known as Teddy Roosevelt, on page 148 in your book. And we are going to have two work text pages to do, but they're very simple. Pages 66 and 67, if you want to have those out. Now, this lesson is three pages long, so I decided to just do all this at one time. So we're going to talk about several different things today. Now, we know, though, from the last lesson that America had declared war on uh, Spain, and they had invaded Cuba in order to uh, keep the Cubans safe, basically. So let's look at page 148, and we're going to read about the preparations uh, of the war. Now, although the United States had declared war, it was not fully ready to fight. The U.S. Navy was prepared. It had been improving its ships since the Civil War. The Navy's fleet or group of warships was one of the best in the world. The U.S. Army, however, was not as prepared. After the Civil War, the Army did not have any major wars to fight, so for several decades it fought American Indians in the West. These wars required only small groups of well-trained soldiers. The U.S. Army needed to be improved. Attacking the Spanish Army in Cuba would take a larger army than the United States had. The Army would need to train. It needed a way to get down to Cuba. Many Americans volunteered to fight for Cuba. Probably the most famous volunteer was Theodore Roosevelt. He was serving as Assistant Secretary of the Navy. Then he left that job to join a volunteer cavalry unit called the Rough Riders. So you know that we have um, uh, several different uh, uh, branches of the um, military. And so all of these branches were not prepared. The Navy was the most prepared. Now that brings us to the warfare uh, with the Navy, which uh, is at the bottom of page 148. As the U.S. Army prepared for war, the U.S. Navy began the fighting. The Spanish Navy had two fleets. One was in the Atlantic and the other in the Pacific. Many Americans feared that the Spanish fleets might attack cities in the United States. The American Secretary of the Navy wanted both fleets to be destroyed. In the Pacific, the United States had a small fleet commanded by George Dewey. He sailed to Manila Bay in the Philippines. The Philippines was Spain's other large colony. On May 1, 1898, Dewey attacked the Spanish Pacific Fleet. The Spanish ships were far older than the American ships. The Spanish commander was not able to withstand the U.S. Navy. All the Spanish ships sank, and none of the American ships did. The United States was surprised to hear about the great victory. There had not yet been any battles fought in Cuba, but already the Spanish Pacific Fleet was destroyed. Some Americans were worried about the Philippines, would the United States try to take over these islands? Most Americans, however, were happy. At least America's west coast would be safe from attack. The Spanish Atlantic Fleet was harder to fight. It was newer and faster than the Pacific Fleet. Would Spanish ships try to attack America's cities on the east coast? In late May, the U.S. Navy spotted the Spanish Atlantic Fleet in the harbor in Cuba. The Spanish fleet was too well placed for the U.S. fleet to fight. Instead, U.S. ships blockaded the harbor. The Spanish ships could not easily leave. If they tried, they'd have to fight their way out. Now, I would like to pull up, I should have already had it up and I didn't. I'd like to pull up a, uh, a map and show you where this is talking about. Let's pull this map up, I hope it's big enough. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so the Philippines are right here, okay? Now, Spain is right here. It's in Europe, okay? 
here's the United States, and here's the Philippines, and here's Cuba. Okay, now this is the west coast of the United States, and this is the east coast of the United States. Now, the book is telling us that the Spanish fleet of the Navy, their warships, on the eastern coast, which is closer to Spain, right between Spain and the United States, was much stronger than the Spanish Western Fleet. Now, remember the Earth is round, so the Philippines, actually here's your Pacific Ocean, and here's where it comes out to the United States, to the western side. So the Spanish also had control of the Philippines, which the Philippines, again, remember the world is round, so the Philippines was on the western, it was close to the western side of the United States, the western coast. So really, the Philippines is just right over here from the United States, if you were to make this into a, a circle, into a ball, a sphere. So the people in the United States, we were worried about our western shore we were worried that the Spanish fleet might sail from the Philippines and attack our western coast. Well, that's why uh, George Dewey was commanded to go over there and destroy the Spanish fleet that was here, which the book was also telling us that the Spanish fleet in the Philippines was much older. And so uh, there was a, um, a bay that they would sail into called Manila Bay in the Philippines. And when the U.S. sent their fleet over there, they attacked and they sank every one of the Spanish ships. So then after that, the United States was like, whoo, okay, good, we're safe over here because there's no more Spanish fleets to attack us from over here. They just have to worry about these here. So that's what that was telling us. Now let's turn our page in our book to page 150. Now we've been talking about most of the war was on the water. It was with the Navy, but there was some land battles as well. So look at page 150 at the very top where it says land war. And there's a picture there of the Rough Riders charging San Juan Hill during the Spanish-American War. Now, with the Spanish fleets out of the way, the American army began to fight in Cuba. The most important city to take was called Santiago de Cuba. It was located on the southern coast of Cuba. The city was protected by a number of hills. In early July, the U.S. Army fought to capture the hills. The Battle of San Juan Hill is the most famous. Theodore Roosevelt helped to lead the Rough Riders in this battle. He and his fellow soldiers became famous for charging up the hill to drive off the Spanish army. After the American victory at San Juan Hill, the city of Santiago de Cuba was still under Spanish control. Its harbor had the Spanish fleet, but soon after the battle, the fleet tried to leave the harbor. The U.S. Navy destroyed Spain's Atlantic fleet. Now the hills were taken and the Spanish fleet was gone. Santiago de Cuba had few defenses left. For two more weeks, the Spanish forces held out, but finally, on July 17th, the Spanish in Santiago de Cuba surrendered to the U.S. forces. So let's read about wrapping up the war. That was a short war, wasn't it? American forces didn't move onto Cuba's capital, Havana. Instead, they moved to a smaller Spanish-owned island, Puerto Rico. American forces didn't have great success there. They captured about half the island by mid-August. At that point, the United States and Spain agreed to a ceasefire. They would stop fighting. The Spanish accepted U.S. control of Cuba, Puerto Rico, the Phil Philippines, and Guam. So after this, it was a very short war. It only lasted about 100 days. And so finally, America showed its power. And after the Spanish-American War, that's kind of when the, the world went, whoa, whoa, wow, Americans, yeah, they're up there. We don't want to fight against the Americans. They have a strong military. And so um, after uh, we took control, remember how uh, we said that we, had, we already had control of Alaska. That was ours. It had been ours. So that took Russia out of the way. So now 
right here in the North America area, now we had control of all this and this over here. And there's Guam, is, I can't see it on this map, but Guam is a small island over here as well. So all of these islands and all of these islands now, America, we had control. We didn't certainly own them, but we had American control of them, no Spanish control anymore. So it didn't take long for Spain to learn, did it? All right, let's get our work text page out. And let's look at page 66 right quick. Now, um, these are the seals of the military branches. The United States military protects America and keeps its citizens safe. America's military has five branches, the Army, Marine Corps, Navy, Air Force, and Coast Guard. They're headed by the Commander-in-Chief, the President. The Army's job is to protect and defend the security and resources of the United States. The Army provides ground troops. The Marine Corps works from Navy craft at sea and it's first at the scene of a conflict. The Navy protects America's interest at home and around the world. The Air Force protects the United States from the air as well as space and cyberspace. The Coast Guard serves by protecting the nation's waterways. Each branch of the United States military works together to protect our nation. And there's the seals of each one of those. Now, your job is, your assignment is, if you have anybody in your family that is uh, a service member in any of these branches, you just need to tell about it right down here. Um, whether it's if you want to talk about maybe you have a grandfather or an uncle or somebody who maybe is retired from it or maybe that's somebody that's in it just write about it and just tell me about it just a little bit about it if you don't have anybody then you don't have to fill it out so let's look at the map on page 67 now we've already done a map earlier um, in the chapter remember we talked about a city map so we're going to use the map on page 143 in our textbook. So let's turn back to page 143 in our textbook. All right. Now, this is a map grid, this map that's on page 67 in your work text. It's made up of lines that form squares. The letters and numbers on the grid help you find places. So, we're going to use this map on page 143 to label the bodies of water on the map. So, um, there are, there's an ocean and a sea that we need to label on this map grid. At the very top in the right hand corner, what ocean is that? That is the Atlantic Ocean. So, you need to fill that in on your map on page 67. Down at the bottom where it says sea, what sea is that? That's the Caribbean Sea. So you'll write the Caribbean there. And it's right there on your map on page 143. You can copy how to spell it there. Some people say Caribbean. Caribbean, Caribbean, doesn't matter. Tomato, tomato. All right, look at number two at the top on page 67. What two battles were fought at sea? Two. All right, so let's find C2 on your map. So C is at the bottom, so find C, okay? And then you'll find number two over on the left-hand side, and you'll go over and up with your finger to see where you come to. You come to San Juan Hill, okay? So there's Sant Santiago de Cuba and San Juan Hill are the two battles that were fought there. So you'll fill that in on number two at the top. Santiago de Cuba and San Juan Hill were the two battles fought in that area. See how they used that uh, square, that grid, so that you can kind of see where that's at? All right, what is the location of Cuba's capital? Well, let's see. Cuba's capital is, do you, do you see it on the map? It's Havana, okay? Do you see the location? First, we have to list the letter, then the number of the grid. So what letter is it in? And what number is it in? 
Did you get B3? Okay, if you'll find B and go up, and then three and go over, you'll find that Havana is in that square. So the answer to number three at the top is B3. All right, look at number four. What small Spanish-owned island is located at F2? Okay, F2. What's that island located at F2? Puerto Rico. San Juan is the name of a city. Because if you look at the map key, it tells you that a big black dot means a capital, capital city. So Puerto Rico is the name of the island. So that's the answer on number four. Okay, on number five, we're going to have to use the scale at the bottom of the map key. So what you're going to do is get a piece of paper, any just a scrap piece of paper is fine, and you're going to put the very end of it on the zero, and you're going to measure out to the 400 mile mark, and you're going to put a little pin mark there, okay? And that's your measurement. So what you need to do is you need to see about how far it is from Havana to Santiago de Cuba. Okay, so you'll put the end of your paper on Havana, and you'll measure, and then you'll hold your pen there, and you'll measure again. Now, if you're doing it correctly, you should get about 800 miles. In other words, you would have had to have measured twice. Okay, if you're lost and you don't know how to do that, could you see if somebody in your house could show you how to tell that? I'd like for you to know how to tell that on a map, how to tell how far something is, okay? Okay, and I don't need a picture of this either. I also do not need a picture of your military branches, okay? All right, that is all of your assignment for the day.